And I'll let everybody in now. You want to share your screen and go to it, add the product up? Yeah. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, it looks great. Cool. Thank you so much, by the way. I can't tell you enough. How much <laughs> I no worries. No worries. It's yeah, I, I do think we should. Uh, I don't know who wrote those other modules, but I do think there might be something in, you know, putting some materials through this you know, uh, like a module or whatever for this, if this yeah. becomes a thing. So, yeah. Yes. I, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to my person who does the other stuff and see what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds she cool. is a student who is, has an internship this summer, so she's not as available. That's understandable. <laughs> but she is looking for something to do. So when I get off the phone here, I'm going to send her a note. Yeah, yeah. I just think it might be a good idea to set yeah, something I agree. up. Yeah, because it'll just add, you know, more opportunity for them to understand the product. Yeah, and I, and I work with her, and so, yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me, uh, let me turn on, let me let them in. Sure. Hello, William. How are you? I'm well. How are you guys? Good. Nice to see you, or at least to be with you today. I appreciate your interest in this, and Ramona and I are excited to uh, train your students. So, Hello, Ramona. Hey, I am going to... Uh, there were a couple students that were trying to get in, and maybe they had a weird link or whatever, so I'm going to essentially tell them to drop out and try to reconnect. So just give me one more second. Sure. sure. And we're recording as well. Great. Be right back. All righty. We should have a couple more people joining us then. Terrific. Should we wait a minute? Ah, you're recording. Let's go with it. They're, I mean, they're ready. So we'll, they'll, they'll be here in just a second. Good. Well, thank you all for joining us today. I'm going to turn it over to Ramona to train you in Tract IQ. It's a tool that you can use uh, to analyze uh, business patterns and uh, help with uh, capstone classes. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Ramona and let her start. Great. And Ramona, while while we're doing this, just to let you know, I mean, this this group is kind of a, a test run for us, right? Tract IQ looks really cool. And I and we're trying to figure out how best to use it. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, we are looking, uh, we are working on a consulting project about a, a multi-purpose equine facility in Bossier City, Louisiana, for feasibility studies. Uh, so, if I don't know what you had planned, <laughs> but I'm pretty <laughs> sure we can spend hours looking through this cool stuff. Yeah, just no. Just so you know that that's that's where we're focused for for immediacy purposes. No, that's that's actually that's always great to know because the platform, um, uh, uh, as Jeff said, it's. It's pretty robust. There is a good deal of data available, and um, so I. Uh, it's always nice for me to get an understanding of how um, uh, you are interested in using it, and you know what kind of uh, answers you're. I mean, you're looking to get sure. what kind of questions you have. So that helps me a lot. Um, I think what I'll do, what I'll start with, is just sort of 
give you kind of a reader's digest of the dashboard so you can yeah. just sort of navigate how the platform is set up. Um, I'm assuming everyone can see my screen. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, this is the dashboard. Uh, um, and this Zoom thing is uh, annoying me a little bit. But um, so this is the dashboard and the way the dashboard is set up, this central area, this area analysis is um, essentially a shortcut feature that we developed um, to help professionals just sort of plug in an address if you have mm -hmm. an, an address of interest that you're wanting to get some demographic and retail uh, data on. So you can just simply plug in an address and it sort of shortcuts to a one, three and five mile radius of the area. And then you can download reports of that area. So that's kind of what this area is. The jump to maps allow you to just jump into straight into the mapping platform without an address. And you can kind of look at the US as a whole and, and, and sort of hover over and look at areas of interest. Um, in that feature, we have uh, we uh, we use the filter tool. You can use the filter tool to sort of look for areas that meet um, specifications that you have. Um, so those are the two primary sort of use case access. Mm -hmm. um, that's what this is. The get started. I'll just show you if you go to my projects. Um, in that, uh, we have three columns: maps, re reports, and profiles. And this is where you can save your map. So if you're looking at an area, you have an address, you've done some, you know, you've put some variables in, you wanna save that to go back to, this is where it will be. Um, if you save reports on certain area, whether it's a demographic report or whatever, you, you would be in this area. And then profiles, and I'll show you that, um, those are generally the retail analysis of an area. So this is kind of your, your filing cabinet for okay. things you want to save. So those are the primary uh, things of the dashboard. We also have some maps that have growth projections in them. If you just want to go straight into a map that meets some of this, um, this is the filter area criteria tool, which we also have another access to, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, this is, allows you to create a you know, a specific report tailored to what your needs are. But honestly, we, our reports that we have established are, are we've sort of curated for most business professionals are, are pretty much what are used. But that feature is there if you wanted to get into it and just sort of create your own tailored report. Okay. So that's pretty much the dashboard. Um, do you have an address of an area that you want to Absolutely. But, be, oh, okay. but before we drill down there, uh, could you tell me the difference again between a report and a profile? So a profile is going to give you information on we have some profiles that sort of we also have some graphic representations and on on like retail gap analysis and um, uh, retail leakage, things about retail areas in the area where the money's being spent. Uh, what the opportunities are in retail in a retail analysis of real estate areas. Um, um, and then a report could be a demographic report. It could be a report on the housing start. Um, so there, and you'll see as we get into it, the, what they visually look like inside the platform. Cool. Okay. Uh, yes. Address is 5705 East Texas Street. Bossier Bossier City. City. Yep. So when the address comes up, you just uh, click on the address and then that will, as you can see, you, your windows stay open. So that gives yep. you um, access. I really don't like this little thing here. Um, so I, I uh, use that thing too. To <laughs> so I got yeah, rid of it. Exactly. So, um, so that takes you straight into the mapping platform when you put in an address. And if you look on the menu over here on the left, you're gonna be able to see the address that you're in. If you collapse this part of the menu, you're gonna be able to see that what you're looking at on the, on the map is the population density, and you're looking at it by census tract. You can change those levels to uh, zip code, you know, whatever you like, but it will default to census tract. Um, and so that's just, that's essentially what you come into when you're looking at this 
uh, when you put the address in and it takes you straight into that shortcut setting, you're uh, looking at the one, three and five mile radius around that address. Mm -hmm. um, you can expand this menu here. So that's gonna show you, you're looking at one, three and five mile radius. You're looking at this address. If you wanted to, you could save this address, save to my places and you just click save and then this over here. Um, and you come over here. Uh, let me just move this. I don't know how to get rid of this menu, um, the Zoom menu. But if you, there is an icon here that's being covered up by this um, that will show you a listing of these addresses so that you can just click on that. And there's also, there we go, now we're getting somewhere. So now you see my places. So now you've got that address saved. And you and these this is for if you go back to a place, you're going to look at it over and again. You're really interested in that area. You don't have to, you just can go straight. Anytime you're on the map, you're doing something else, you want to click back and look at this address. It's right there for you. Cool. Um, and this part of it also allows you to drop a pin um and analyze a specific area which when you're using a filter tool that will come in handy and i can show you that in a second so again we're looking at a one three and five mile radius as you hover over each of the census tracts you'll get the population density for that area and um another i'm going to zoom out a little bit and another thing that you're seeing here these beige circles these are the housing projects in the area that the construction projects so uh, the, these are areas that are under construction. Um, in this case, it says it's a 550 unit project. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that it's multifamily. Um, if it says homes, it'll tell you that it's a, um, a single family housing project. And, but there are a number of construction data that is available on, a, uh, you'll see it on the map. And uh, I, I'll show you how you will, how you can uh, include that report in your information. So if you come down over here on the lower right, this is the legend. I'll zoom in a little. Um, and the legend is, for example, the housing starts. This is the construction data. The size of the bubble gives you a sense of whether it's small, medium, and large. You can click each of these individually to hide them or you can just uh, click here and get rid of them as a whole uh, sure. if you don't want that visual. Um, and in addition to this legend, what you have here is uh, you have school ranking systems. So you can see the schools in the area and what their rankings are. Um, that turns on and off. I don't know if you're familiar with opportunity zones. Uh, tax incentives for developing stuff there, right? That's correct. And so we have those boundaries um, highlighted in the mapping so that you can turn the, you know, if, if, for example, this falls, this area falls within an opportunity zone. Um, and we also have the traffic um, uh, flow data um, cool. here. So you can turn any of these on, did I show you the satellite? We also have the satellite view so you can get a, a, a visual of the land itself. So those are the uh, those are the um, uh, visuals that you have available in the mapping. Here, I'm going to turn that off and turn the housing starts back on. Also, auto adjust. What that does is, if you click that, because you're narrowing your focus to a one, three, and five mile radius, that will um, auto adjust to that area so that you can see the contrast a little more easily. Okay. So, so once with, with opportunity ahead. zones. Uh, mm -hmm. How would you find out more about what the deal is with that opportunity? So, and what I mean by that is that, you know, typically those are those are going to be state legislature type things um, or city type things where the city has agreed to try to get this industry to move there with tax incentives. How do, is there anywhere well, where you would find data like that? Yeah, it's my understanding that the opportunity zones are federal. Oh, um, oh, yes, yes, yes. So those are federal programs. Um, and then once you recognize that, you know, you're in a federal, you're in an area with federal, pro, uh, federal programs available, mm -hmm. um, 
but you I, it. yeah, then you can, yeah, then you can go and, um, you know, you have the address and you can say this is located either within or near an opportunity zone. You can put your address there and it will get the information. But it's my understanding those are federal programs. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, so now that you have, you're looking at your area, you see sort of like where your incoming population, that's really the purpose of this housing as far as this, give you a sense of, you know, development in the area, where's the incoming housing or the retail construction. So when you look at this, you sort of see what it looks like on the ground, but now you wanna run a report. So you come over here to the left under create report, and what we have here are a number of our curated reports. We have a demographic report, a housing start report, which gives you information on those beige bubbles on the house, on the starts that are in the area. Um, uh, and this one falls within your five mile radius. So it's gonna probably be the only one that's illustrated. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you also have one that shows population change between 90 and 25. There is also a retail sales report market profile indices that sort of give you an, a sense of um, what the market profile of the area and also consumer expenditures. That's huge. Okay. Um, now, can we, consumer expenditures are, are a big thing for this group. Okay, right. good. Well, we'll, um, we'll run one of those reports. Okay. And in terms of population changes, retail sales and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming we could we could keep expanding the radius, right? Because this, yeah, this, absolutely. this facility is going to be, uh, for most people, it's going to be a drive to destination, right? I mm -hmm. mean, it is, I, as interesting as 550 units are five miles from, those are not the people that are going to be spending money, <laughs> you know, doing, right, doing right. training at the equine facility, right? Yes. So, um, but to see increases in population, retail expenditures, things like this within 30 miles, 45 miles, that would be amazing. Okay, well then let me show you, let me, let me address that. So we're going to cancel this because I want to return to something that um, I'm going to minimize this. So we're going to go back to this, um, this menu here. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking at a one, three and five mile circular radius. Right. You can change that radius up to 20 miles. Gotcha. That is your maximum value you can put in here for a circular radius. You can make customize uh, a, a circular radius. You could do any number. You can select up to three areas to get the data on. So you could just do one that's 20 miles or you could do you know any, any, any combination here and okay. enter your own value up to 20. Now that's the circular For three radius. different areas. Oh, I see, I see. Right. And, and we so, could we could do it by county or zip code as well though, so. Yeah, you can look at your, you can look at, well, you're looking at the data behind you. Like right now you're looking at census track. You could change that to zip code if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So we go down here to five digits zip codes. So now your data, you're looking at a zip code. This zip code has this population density. I'm going to auto adjust that. Now you can see the differentials mm -hmm. in that area. So this okay. is your higher your higher density populations. And then if you want to, um, say you want to not look at a circular radius, you want to look at a drive time. Hey. You know, there are different areas where, you know, a, ra a, a radius analysis is ideal. Um, mm -hmm. We find a lot of rural or other in areas that drive time is more important. So with the drive time, you can look at uh, five mile, 15 mile, uh, I mean, five minute, 15 minute. These are drive times. Awesome. So lots, what's an hour outside of where you are? So those are, and now you've really expanded your, your area. Yeah, you have that's to auto huge. adjust that. So say you say, you know, oftentimes with drive time, it's, it's five, you know, maybe five, 10, 20 or 30. Like I would say, I'd take off 60 and just say 30. So now you're looking at five minute, 15 minute and 30 minute drive time. Then I would auto adjust to get a better sense of how that looks on the map and that with that area. So now you've got a drive time analysis. That's great because okay. uh, outside of, you know, Bossier and Shreveport itself, most of the area is going to be far more rural. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and we're essentially looking at demographics, expenditures, retail opportunities, et cetera, et cetera, um, given essentially similar facilities in Tyler, Texas, in, in Arkansas, in Monroe, you see what I mean? Yeah. Where, yeah. where we are, it shouldn't, it, it's not a zero sum game. It's not a competition per se, but we need to know what, to the extent we can, what is within say 90, 90 minutes tops. Mm, mm -hmm. Anyway. Let's see what your maximum value here is 60 minutes on your drive time usually. Okay. Yeah. So, and, th and that's fine because we, yeah. could just, we could just move, you know, we could do this for Bossier City, uh, ladies and gentlemen in the audience. And then we could do the same thing for Longview, for Tyler, for El Dorado, for, you know, Little Rock, for uh, depending on how deep you want to get. That's correct. And you're going to get, you know, a, 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 a lot more data depending on how far you, out you go. Right, too. Sure. So you're covering more geography. You'll have larger reports. Um, so for the purpose of this, I think I'm going to do five and 15 minutes just for loading, unless sure, you want to do yeah. 30 minutes in there. Nope, nope, I, nope. We'll, we'll play with my it. main concern is that when I do the Zoom recordings, the, everything runs a little slower. <laughs> it's sure. not really true. I mean, it's not the way it runs in this platform, but with Zoom recording, it kind of everything has to think it through. So let's say for this example, I think that's a great example. Oh, we'll do a drive time analysis. We're looking at five minute and 15 minute drive time. Mm -hmm. Your location is plotted. You're including your housing starts. So we go back down here to create report. Now you can also, like we're looking at zip code level right now. If you're looking at uh, the demographic report, you're already looking at the zip code. Maybe, you know, you want to compare that to the county as a whole yeah. or to Shreveport, you know, your local MSA. So you, we, we can... In that report, we can include comparison data that is upper geography. So you're at zip code now. You want to look at how that looks against the city, how that looks against the county. Those columns will be included in your demographic report. This is your data for this these um, this drive time area, and how does that compare to the county and the um, MSA as a whole? So we'll do, let's do a demographic report first, just to show you what that looks like, so you can get a feel for the demographics. So we do create report, and this is going to take you into uh, another window, which is our report platform. And this um, essentially, so now you're looking at your five, your five minute, 15 minute, it's comparing it to Shreveport, Bossier City, and uh, the uh, county, yeah. yeah. So it, this report will give you, you know, you're, you're looking at, population, household, family, income, these are all uh, census data um, broken down by variables that are most often requested. You can edit these reports if you want and save it as something else. You could even save it as a template if you have something different, but we find most people just the everything that they're looking for are usually in these reports. It includes housing structure, um, so you have information on, on the housing structure. I think there's also drive to work, mm -hmm. any drive times in here. Um, so this is a comprehensive demographic report on, on that geography you've chosen and its upward comparisons. You can download this as an Excel. You can also download it as a CSV in case you need to use this data in some other uh, platform, some other software program. You can also download it as a PDF, just as a nice report. Um, you can click here and copy this link and share this report in an email or a Word document with anyone. And they will be able to, when they click that link, they'll come into this type of a report. They'll come into the platform looking at the report the way you see it. They won't need a login. They won't need a subscription. They won't be able to manipulate the data or, or do anything else you know, with that, but they will be able to see what you're seeing here. And then this gives you the data dictionary and the documentation on where this data is coming from. So that's that that's what you have when you run this report. And so let's say you want, so you're going to save this report. Let's say you want to save this report. Generally, what I would do is I would just like put the address
And I would make sure that, you know, I note that it's a demographic report. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I would say five, 15 minute radius um, with uh, MSA and county comparisons. Just, okay. you know, so if you save that, and anytime you want to go back to your dashboard, you, this, uh, our logo, you click that on the left. I mean, you also have the window open, but if you're somewhere and you, you just want to click that, it'll take you back to the dashboard. You go to my projects and, um, oh, did I say that? Maybe I didn't say that. Let me see. Oh, there it is. No, wait. Oh, it's a report. That's one. <laughs> Uh, 5705 East Texas Street, Bossier City, there's your demographic report. And again, this icon allows you to share that report. You can also edit the title, the description. You could duplicate it if you want to go use that as a base and do something else. Um, maybe you want to take some of the data out of it, um, or you can remove it entirely. So that's how you save, you know, into your archives. What's a data snack? What do you say? Oh, these data snacks. These are um, things that we've done um, with our, they, they, they come primarily from our, our blog. They're mm -hmm. information on, um, they're basically things on like median growth. I mean, these are informative uh, information that's backed by data. Gotcha. Like so, where are the most vacant homes located in the U.S., things like that. Now, when you create a report like that and you mm -hmm. share it, mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming there's a there's a geolocation or geographic searchable thing that you could also share with people who don't have a subscription. Like you're talking about what, the map itself. Yeah, because what we're yes. going to do, yes, um, when we when we present to the clients live, it would be very cool to be able to pull up these things and mm -hmm. highlight things live. Uh, yeah. But we'd also want to print that material, at least digitally, for uh, for their actual <clears throat> report. Yes, that's why we have this share is generally we created that really for the purpose of presentations. So okay. that when you are using this, you can say, OK, you just go, you know, or I mean, if you're in the presentation, you'll be in the platform. Right. But you can also send it to folks and. Um, so like if you're sharing it, you copy this link, you send, they'll get that in an email and if they, you know, so that they can see it later, if they want to look at the map, they want to look at the report, right. you know, when they, when they go, um, now that we, you can do the same thing for the maps. So you can share your reports. Um, and again, you can print them. You can, you know, here's the printing is the PDF. So right. if you click the PDF. And you can do that, you know, you get to do download or lands, you know, you can do portrait or landscape. And uh, then you will get a uh, nice, tidy yeah. printed report uh, that that can be shared. If we were to share a map with, you know, various mm -hmm. data embedded, Yes. Uh, when we share it, is that something that is ex that they could explore, like a user could explore? So or is it if you static? yes, right, it's dynamic, but it, they can't manipulate the data. So they can they can do essentially like so. If you here's if you're in the map. So look, first of all, I'll just show you. We're going to save the map. Mm -hmm. So you can save the map. Um, I can't remember that address. I don't see it here because of all. That's right. Just save the Downs 15 minute drive. Perfect. So if you say that, save that, now you've saved the map, you go back to your projects. Now you have your map. And again, you can share that with the link. Now, when they get the link, they will come in and see the map that you see here. And mm -hmm. you can kind of roll around it. You're not going to be able to change the data. You can't go back and, you know, uh, change this data here if you want to look at something else. The really Good, because they'll screw it up. Yeah, exactly. That's why we did it that way. <laughs> so that it's dynamic, they can kind of see it, they can sort of zoom in and zoom out, but they're not going to be able to, to manipulate yeah, that's, the data. That's huge. I mean, yeah. just, for, just for presentation purposes alone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
the wow factor on that is is real. That's cool. Yeah, because it's it has you know it's animated, it's dynamic. You can like look at it, move around. Yeah. Uh, the pop ups, this if you you know if they come over and they look at the housing, the pop ups will show that kind of stuff. Um, so they can sort of see things like that. They'll see that opportunity zones lined out, you know, so all of that will be available. It's just not, they're not going to be able to manipulate the data. Sure. Okay. Um, so in addition to, let's, so you're interested in uh, the consumer expenditures. Let's run that report. Let's get a look at that. So we can, again, you just click it. Um, in this case, I'm not going to do an upward comparison. We'll just create a report on the expenditures. And then what is the, what is the market? What was that market something market report? profiles yeah. yeah i'll show you that one too so this Amazing. gives you the consumer expenditure again you're looking at your five and 15 mile radius that's what you're analyzing mm -hmm. and you're seeing the consumer expenditures um these are this is the summary of all the variables but then there's a little bit like on the so you're looking at food but then there's a drill down on food at home away from home how, how food is being spent housing so you get your summary up top yeah. of the categories, and then there's a drill down of each of those categories. And same applies as everything else, Excel, CSV, PDF, shared data, data dictionary. You can save this as well. Um, so yeah, the same applies, the same of the reports. Um, let's look at the market profile indices. And in this case, I'm gonna compare that to the city. And this will also open up into another window. And now you're going to get, these are based, and then you can look at the data dictionary, will give you the documentation on these um, scales. Um, this is the, let's see, yeah, you can just click on it and it will give you, you know, more information on where this data is coming from. This is from market profile data. This is a part we partnered with easy analytics to give us these market profile datas. This is like what they do. And this gives us a sense of where they, the, what within these market profile indices within that geography and in a comparison to your upward geography of your city, where they fall on the market profile. You've got crime, you know, earthquake. These are just sort of general and also the consumer price index. So this is market profile data. I'm, I yeah. know we're recording, but I'm writing this down. No, no, please. It, the, these, uh, the mar our market profile data, which is part of our, you know, robust data, is um, we is comes through a partnership with Easy Analytics. That's E A S I, and they. Uh, this is this is what they do. They, um, you know, analyze the market indices in uh, uh, all over the country and um, have it annotated to geography, so. And if you click into one of those, like I have no idea what the hell the amusement index would be. I'm not amused in Bossier very often. But, <laughs> um, well, it, it, uh, uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah, what is the, uh, let me see if I can get the, where are the details? This is the amusement Survey index. Data set. And cool. again, and their data, yeah, yeah, this comes, so you can see, you know, where the survey is, what the data details are. And in our data dictionary, we'll, uh, I can send you also like more information on easy analytics too, because okay. they, you know, and it gives you sort of, you, you I can't remember what, because the, um, the um, you know, if it's 300, I think it's up to 300, depends on what the scale, what the, you know, where, where these fall on the scale. So you can become familiar with you know what that index means okay very cool and it also shows you these you know it's giving you three geographies the tables now that's on how it's printing out and again same situation this can be shared just as the others and save these reports um so retail sales of the area let's let's look at that one And again, this is giving you more, you know, you're looking at the five minute, five minute, 15, five and 15 minute drive times. And this is just the retail sales by sector. So, and these are based on uh, the NAICS codes 
of retail sectors. So you've got um, food, non-store, general merchandise, you know, these variables and where it, where they fall, what their retail sales are and, and, and what percentage of retail spending in that area this is. Like this is like clearly motor vehicles sales are area. the highest in that area. Right. Interesting. Um, uh, so you can also see, and the housing starts again, in this case, you'll get a little bit, basically this is going to give you the information on these bubbles so that you can see, um, and this gets downloaded just directly into an Excel file. So if you look at the, uh, this is going to tell you the construction projects in that 15, this is in the 15 minute drive time, um, the type of projects they are, um, the square footage, um, you get a descriptor, you know, it's like a new construction on something for like a residential development. Sometimes they're multi-purpose developments. Those details will be in this column. You get cost approximations, where, the, what stage it's in. Is it in pre-construction, conceptual? Has it been awarded? It's in the design phase. And then the building use is, this is an elderly care. This is a residential subdivision. Um, you know, this one is uh, clearly multi, you know, it's got parking lot, fitness recs, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Gives you the location, the square footage, what county they're in, and but, contact information to on the uh, owners or developers when available. Now, so housing starts include things like, if you scroll over there, it includes, wait, right there, right there, wait, wait, parking lot, fitness, rec centers, clubhouses, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if there's a way to pull data on estimated cost for multi-purpose facilities, for example. It's not a housing start per se, but like this one, that's a multi-purpose. Yeah, is yeah, built. Like you know, that. it's 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 set. You know, so you you could compare these projections right. that are based in these definitely. You know, okay. so you're looking at that item. That's these two are definitely multi-purpose. You can sort of get a sense of that, yes. And here's a multi-residential that's different, but this is, you know, you you can look at the description. It'll tell you this one's got, you know, hotel, motel, rec center, parking lot. This is looking right. at doing, you know, retail. So there, that gives you a sense in your area of that of something that's coming in. Okay. Uh, gosh, what what else? Uh, people Let on me... the call who have been very quiet. Ahead, I think this has a lot of good stuff, especially on the demographic data and the retail sales. I think we'll be able to use a lot of that. Huge, um, especially if you could if you could show trend data, right? Right. Yeah. Um, we're losing people in the area, but um, incomes are going up. You know, the the sales in certain sectors. Here's what that breakdown is. That's that would be huge. Um, let me show you one other feature that may uh, also be of use. And this, so the on this left, this is where you can create these reports. So you've got a number of those that gives you some pretty in-depth data. I, I hit cancel and then minimize. Okay. And then I come over here and I open this menu again. So we were at create reports. Now we're at get insights. Now this is going to give you another viewpoint, uh, but it, uh, so you're also gonna have the, demo, the demography, but let's look at retail opportunity because that's where we're getting the retail sale, uh, a deeper analysis on that. And this is by NAICS code. So this opens up another panel over here on the right. And it's again, telling you your uh, address, you're looking at a five and 15 minute drive time. This is the number of businesses and employees in five minutes. You can toggle between five minutes, 15 minutes. Now, the, you can go through this. It will give you the top five retail opportunities in the area based on the, the sales. And you can also look at the leakage factor, which is the difference between the sales and the businesses that are addressing that. So um, you wait, can- Wait, wait, could you, could you say that again? So you're looking at the leakage factor. The leakage. So it's like if they're spending so if so much money is being spent in an area, and yet there's like only two places that actually address that, that that's that's a 
or or there's uh, there's ten stores that sell ice cream, and the sales of the ice cream are not that large. Then that's not a good opportunity. But if there are where there's a lot of money being spent on say cars and there's only one dealership, that's an opportunity. So it gives you the sense of like the difference between the money that's being spent and the, and, and the money that's the potential sales for the area mm-hmm. based on the demography of where people are, or the consumer, you know, what people are spending their money on and the opportunity to spend it there. Okay, so a leakage factor, if I'm looking for opportunities, a high or low leakage factor is what we're looking for. You want a high retail gap, you want high retail gap and right. low leakage and low factors. leakage factor. Okay. So, so, so all like, we got to do, guys, is open up a warehouse superstore. Yeah, clearly. Those, all, those often end up in the top five and cars, mm-hmm. of course. Now, That's all. Uh, uh, <laughs> right, simple, right. easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So another thing you can do, this, this little box up here on the right, this allows me to open that panel up into its own page, which is the, what I prefer. Um, so you're looking at the retail opportunity. These are the number of businesses, the number of employees. This is giving you the leakage factor, the, the retail gap. You can drill, click onto that and drill down further. You can see, you know, the, this is the retail potential. This is the potential sure. sales in the area. This is how many sales are made in the area. So that is an opportunity. This is the retail potential. These are the sales. This is a little lower opportunity. That's in the that's in the uh, fifteen minute drive, five right, minute gotcha. drive. Gotcha. Okay. So so uh, um, let me just go back. Yeah, let me go back to this. So you can, so these, it just shows you sort of numerically, these are the retail. And I think the scale, I think this tops at 100. I think 100 is the top on this, this scale. So you're gonna look at the gap, you look at the leakage factor. So the leakage factor is telling you this is the gap in, in what sales are. And again, you're gonna find your NAICS code. So you know exactly if you wanna drill down into that. Um, now, suppose you're looking for something that's not in these top five, you can go over here and focus on another sector and you get a whole a list of the NAICS and you, at food services, accommodation, non-store, whatever the retail opportunity uh, that falls under the NAICS, you can look at the subgroup and, mm-hmm. the, and the sectors under that. Does, sector. does anyone know in this group what the, what the NAICS code for equine anything is i mean it's such a weird that would probably be under amusement i would assume let me see here if there's miscellaneous general stores i just uh sent it in the group or in the chat one one two nine two wow check you out william cool um now that's a good search by next code let's look what's the number one 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 two nine two zero No results. So clearly yeah, that's I'm not, not I'm not I'm not surprised by that. Okay. Um and that's <laughs> also for that... something really specific. <laughs> um, um, but that's that kind of information is good for us too, because you know, I'm always uh, uh, sending info back to dev data and to find out if in fact it's accessible, it's just not in the pre-printed reports. Yeah. Um, um so I'll find that out. Also uh, consultants on the call in IBIS world, we should be able to get industry reports. And I threw some of them on the Moodle page, by the way, but you could probably do a grouping of NAICS codes because it's not going to be just one thing, right? Um, go-kart racing and, and uh, uh, rodeos are two very different things that could happen in the same facility. You see what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's why we had a search for NAICS, but I will I will check into how robust that, you know, because I mean, it's pretty serious, a lot of NAICS code. So I'll find out if there's a possibility. I doubt, I mean, other than that search of just searching and creating, right. because what you could conceivably do is build your own report, but this exactly. is a profile. So this is the difference between a report and a profile. This gotcha. is a profile. And you can also click on demography, you'll get, essentially the same information that you're getting in the demographic report 
but this will show it in a graphic representation. And this is good for reports or presentations. You can sort of show, you know, household income in the area, travel time to work, you know, vacancy rates, that sort of stuff. So that gives you a graphic. That's, that's part of this. That's why this is really not the same as a report. These are profiles. It's giving you a profile of the area, both on demography and the retail opportunity, which is what we find most often needed um, by our professionals. Mm -hmm. So that is, and again, you can save this. Let's see. Um, So when you're in this panel, you can save this. So again, and it's going to give you the address. So that one's a, bless, uh, a blessing. You can just like, it's right there. You mm -hmm. click save. Then you go over here to the logo and you go into my projects. Get rid of that annoying thing. And then you go over to profiles and there is your profile report. And you can, it's still interactive. You can save this. Also, you can download this report. There are two PDFs that we've developed. One is a, a more comprehensive. This one's a lot more comprehensive. It has all the, 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 you know, the groups and the subgroups. Um, this makes a, a really nice addition to any kind of you know, market summary report, um, market analysis. You've got, this is a retail opportunity profile report. It's got a table of contents. Um, and it basically shows, you know, all of the, all the yeah, all, all everything <clears throat> and the subgroups. Uh, the other one is tabular. So it's a little, it's a little quicker. You can just kind of look at it and sort of see in a tabular format, um, you know, the different sectors and where they fall. So you can sort of see the opportunity of these a little, and it's just, a, this is more a condensed version. That's all, it's basically the same information. So those are all the different ways that you can uh, manipulate, save and share the data. And the use cases pretty much primarily are, here's my address, you know, I wanna run these reports. Uh, I want to um, look at the retail of, uh, retail opportunities in the area. Um, so those are the two primary use cases. There's one more use case. Um, if I, I hate to overload you with so much information, but. Well, that's funny you say that because I'm loving all of this, but I'm going to go back and try to do some of it and not remember anything. So I'm one, I'm glad that, that this is being recorded, but when we get stuck, are we, are we kind of on our own banging our head against the wall or, or how do we get how do we get help? No, absolutely. Um, if uh, so, yes, you, that's why we record these mainly because it's a lot of information. It's mm -hmm. really easy once you get into it, but you know, it's a familiarity issue. Absolutely. And then you sure. get into it. You, um, uh, if you run into questions, oftentimes you can copy me on your emails to Jeff and I will either, I can create a short video sometimes and just say, oh, this is where you find that thing you know, gotcha. or uh, if you have a specific question on data, I may, I, if I don't know it, I know who to go to, to get the information on like, you know, wh where does that data come from or how often is it updated, that kind of thing. And okay. then, um, uh, or we can set up uh, another call like this and we can do another training on a specific topic that you have in mind. Um, the one other feature that we have is filter area by criteria. And that's where you just literally like you drop a pin and say, I want to look at areas where I want to filter out, you know, incoming population is growing by 5% and employment is growing by 3%. Like, where is that? And it'll filter on the map. It'll show you where those areas are uh, highlighted that meets your criteria and then you drop a pin and you can essentially just run these same reports on that area. So the difference is I know an area, I know an address and I want to know about it. The other mm -hmm. one is I don't know where, but I know what I want. Gotcha. Amazing. Um, I don't suppose, I, I'm assuming this is US or North America data only though, right? 
Uh, we do have data uh, uh, across the world, but uh, it predominantly is U.S. data. Yeah, of course. Cool beans. Well, I I am blown away. This is really really good stuff. Um, anybody else have any last questions, comments, or whatever? I know we're bumping up on the on the hour mark already. I'm really excited to use this. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. This. I mean, the capstone. I mean, the ways this can be used. I mean, we have a specific need for it, but man, the, just exploratory stuff and starting businesses and other consulting projects. Uh, man, this is this is good stuff. That's great feedback. Yeah, and that's another yeah. thing. We're it's all, it's always, all good, right? We're always that's interested good. in your feedback. That's important to us too. Uh, so it's like if you know, again, if there's a piece of data or there's something that you're looking for, we we are in direct communication with Dev Data and that to make sure that you know uh, consistent improvements are being made that are addressing what you're really interested in. So right, and we uh, love your feedback. The uh, the consultants on the call know that. Uh, I'm not shy. So as, as we work through things uh, and have questions, I, we're happy to provide feedback or like the, the NAICS code not mm -hmm. being in there. I'm not surprised because mm -hmm. it's such a weird one, um, but little stuff like that or, or yeah. suggestions. I, this is great. I, I'm looking forward to exploring. And just to let you know, it's, it's sort of built on a backbone we, of a product called Social Explorer that's been around for 15 years mm -hmm. that was a, well, and still is a product for um, the social sciences, demographic data. Now, yep. you know, we started to integrate health data and uh, crime data into it and then some business data. And this is an extension of that. And so we've been around a long time with products like this. And, and so this is new for us moving into the business area. And so any feedback we can get from you as you use it, I'll be reaching out because our goal is to get you using this right. at a very reasonable price eventually, right? So that you can help us as well in terms of us learning how you use it. Absolutely. And, and not related to this call, but um, do you have use cases for academic researchers because i'm looking i'm looking through some of the just as we were flipping through I'm like oh my gosh we have regional expenditures on on uh, drugs and healthcare things oh my gosh we if we do yes, these other variables and compare to yeah. nsa's now i'm now i'm thinking you know journal articles not just yeah consulting projects okay cool we have use cases mostly in the social sciences with our other product but we will be developing them here as well. Okay. Well, I mean, finance and economics people are social yes. scientists with very yes. low social skills. Yeah. So uh, we're we're, do, we're doing similar research, just looking at the numbers, not necessarily the squishier stuff. Anyway, um, <laughs> thank you very much. If any you other, reach out anytime. Yeah. Yeah. We will. Uh, we're going to look forward to doing this and. Uh, Appreciate all the help. Yeah, great. Let me know how your summer goes with it. Will do. Thanks so and much. And all your students have access. And if you added a student and they don't have it, let me know. We'll get them set up. Okay. Awesome. All right. All right, everybody. Have a great Thanks. day. Thank you for spending Thank the you hour guys. with us. Take care. Thank Bye you. now. Bye.